Welcome. In this video, we'll show you how you can make a drum and bass track like this. As drum and bass relies heavily on drums, let's start with those. A common technique popular in this genre is to use sliced drum break recordings to build the drums around. Sliced percussion loops will speed your workflow, as starting with a good loop means you don't need to do all the drum processing and can put your own stamp on the rhythm. I've curated a bunch of sounds so you don't have to watch hours of futzing with sound selection in the tutorial. If you're interested in sound design and mixing, please check out our Mixing Basics series for advice on mixing. This is the loop I'll be using. Let's press F8 and type Slice X. Add it to a playlist track header to make an instrument track. This means the channel rack, playlist and mixer are linked together. It will show up in each with the same names and colors. Now let's add the drum break. Cool. However, 130 BPM is really slow for drum and bass. As you can see in SliceX, this break is supposed to be played at 174 BPM. So right click the tempo selector, select type in value and type in 174. Some of you may already be familiar with using SliceX this way, but did you know that SliceX supports multiple outputs? I'll double click the snares marker in the wave here and route it one mixer track to the right of the rest of the loop. Let's do that for all the main snares. See, you can separate slices this way and have discrete signal paths, as if you were using separate channels in the channel rack. Fast forward a bit, and I've now also routed the hats to a track that is offset two mixer tracks to the right. This allows maximum control over sliced wave files. Okay, we've been listening to this in pattern mode. If we want to make a song out of this though, we should probably switch FL Studio to song mode. Click here or press L on your keyboard to switch modes. Let's take care of the high end now. I'll add another drum break that I've saved as a preset. Then click this button here to send the notes to the piano roll. Next, I'll add a tambourine on every quarter note. Drag it onto an empty playlist track header, then right click its channel button and select fill each four steps. And I'll add two extra hi-hats. For the second one, I'll choose fill each two steps so it plays at every eighth note. Then I'll press K to open the graph editor and make a few velocity variations to emphasize the quarter notes. As you can see, the high end is often very detailed and often very loud in modern drum and bass music. Right, let's return to drums later on. We're about to drop some bass. I'll grab this bass patch I've made, add it as an instrument track. And record some notes. When you first click the record button, you get a recording filter pop up. I'll choose notes and automation and check the don't show this again option so I'll be able to instantly record. Don't worry, these options will stay accessible via a right click on the record button. You can now start recording by pressing the play button or hitting the space bar immediately. But I'll turn on the recording pre count in the toolbar here. That will play a couple of beats of metronome only to give me a little time to prepare before recording. Depending on your workflow, you may also want to turn on Recording Starts Playback. Now, the R key on your keyboard will start the recording process, unless you have typing keyboard to piano on, in which case it will play a note instead. Alternatively, it's quite normal to enter your notes in the piano roll with your mouse. Your call. Cool. 
Nice. Now that we have drum and bass parts, we're done, right? Drum and bass achieved. Well, no. This is just the beginning. Let's do some effects processing. We're going to set up sidechain compression to drop the level of the bass when the kick and snare play. This makes the beat hit harder as it can cut through the mix. The bass is automatically compressed or ducked. Sidechaining is where one track is used to affect a parameter on a different one. Usually it's volume. I do this in a special way, where I'll have a sidechain bus on the first mixer track, which sends to all tracks that are supposed to receive sidechain inputs. So I'll select an unused mixer track and move it to the left with Alt and arrow left. I'll right click and select my sidechain trigger preset. If you want to know what this is and why I'm doing it this way, please check out the compression video in our Mixing Basics series where we go into detail about this process. Now I'll unroute it from the master by clicking the routing arrow and then I'll send the kick and snare into the track so they arrive at the bass after being processed. And sidechain it to the bass track by shift clicking its routing arrow. And there we go, clean sidechain pumping. Sidechain sounds are being ducked each time the trigger sound plays. Kick and snare happen exactly in these gaps. Now I'll get a code patch I've made previously. record a progression into the pattern to provide musical context. Nice. Another important part of drum and bass music is fills. Sections and elements that break up the flow of the previous 8 bar or 16 bar segment then introducing switch-ups in the energy level of the music so it doesn't feel like a long loop. We'll put a link in the video information with Afrojack where he describes the importance of variations for each repetition of the main themes. Let's try adding those now. Duplicate this entire block. Select it all by holding Ctrl and clicking and dragging the mouse and pressing Ctrl B. Like in the last video, I want the first part to have less energy and the second part to step it up a notch. So let's add a fill. I'll make some space here. And add a respace patch I've prepared for this project. Double click the pattern to open the piano roll. Paint in the root note of the chord that is currently playing. Use a slide note to pull it up and down. Cool. After that, we need a significant change up in the main elements of the song, so I've already taken out the chords and I'll add in another louder bass patch that takes the place of the chords in the mix. Think of it like a musical relay race. The lead role is passed on after fills like this one. See? They sort of switch places. Now in this second section, let's add more fills. Back to drum work it is. I've prepared two drum breaks for fills. They'll go here and here. So we'll make space at the end of these segments and add the fills as instrument tracks. These add increased energy in this segment due to the higher density of sounds. Add a reverb to the bass and automate that too. This gives the bass a greater sense of space and adds another layer of expressivity. Press F8, type reverb with two E's and grab a fruity reverb 2 plugin. 
drop it on the basis mixer track, set it to all wet, then right click its mixer dry wet control and select create automation clip. This will make a new automation clip on a track of the same color that is grouped to the instrument track. Right click inside the clip to add points and right click then select delete to delete points. You can also open up the automation editor by double clicking the automation clip. The biggest benefits of this editor over inline editing are that you can delete points via the delete key, select multiple points at once and move them, and copy and paste selected points. Now we're cooking with reverb. We now have the musical framework for the track laid out. It's now time to flesh it out with some layers. First and foremost, let's add a small pluck sound from the sounds I've curated. Then we'll clone the re-space and make it go along with everything in the second section. I'll right click its playlist track header and select clone. I want everything duplicated so I'll leave all the options on. Now I'll drag the clips to the right and then copy them using shift, click and drag. I'll select them all and then go to the playlist edit menu and select make unique. Now all clips are unique and won't be affected by changes to other instances. OK, then I'll change the notes to fit with the chord progression. Let's add some flex sounds too. I'll press F8, type flex and drag it onto an empty playlist track header. Then I'll select it all here, search for the patch I've curated in the search bar down here. And draw in a pattern that fits with my chord progression. Same thing for the next step, but with a different patch and rhythm. The last step is adding effects. I'll mainly be using white noise from 3USK, Flex and FL Studio Factory samples to achieve an atmosphere and sense of motion or emphasis to the main rhythmic elements. We've explained this technique in detail in the House Tools video. Turns out white noise is used a lot in drum and bass music also. So we'll add 3USK to an empty playlist track header, set two of the three oscillators to white noise, Paint in a long note with a slide down. Choose a bandpass filter and automate its frequency. Then we'll add more of the same. Clone the track. Invert the automations and the note positions. Now we have noise. Noise can add energy when it evokes a background atmosphere like a cheering crowd in a stadium. Let's also grab some effect sounds from Flex. And finally, let's add some FL Studio percussion and effect sounds to step up the textural quality of the main active sounds. I won't bore you with figuring out what sounds work here, but simply show you how it ended up. And there we have it. This is a solid core to a drum and bass song. With the techniques described in this video, you should be able to create your own DNB banger in no time. Don't forget to check out the video information for additional helpful links in the menu and the demo project made for this video. Happy music making.